Hello and welcome. We are here with the new season of the Swim England East Region podcast. We've had a bit of a break from recording whilst the return to training guidance was initiated, but we are now back and putting shows together for swimmers, coaches and parents. Kicking us off with a coaching discussion, we've got Ben Negus, the head coach at City of Peterborough, and he will be talking us through his thoughts on Butterfly as part of our Introduction to Series for Coaches. There are some great summary points linked in the show notes, so I would encourage you to check these out, download them and share them within your coaching teams. Over the coming month, we will be putting together four of these Introduction to episodes that cover the four strokes, so stay tuned. So let's get straight into it, as Ben Negus gives us his insights for coaches on introduction to butterfly hello ben and welcome to the show thank you very much for sharing some time with us today we've given you a quick introduction in the show notes but we'll get straight into it if you're happy to share your thoughts with us on butterfly um so as as far as uh, i'm concerned with fly it's it's a pretty straightforward stroke to coach as long as you keep the uh, a few simplistic uh, principles so uh, at Peterborough, we tend to uh, focus on four key points. Um, one would be, uh, the first point would be body line. Um, we work body line first, then work on rhythm and timing, uh, then go from slow to fast, and then go into the distance per stroke phase. So what, what we're really looking at is just a progression of uh, building up uh, body awareness, making sure that they're actually aware about what they're doing from the, that body position, um, which is is kind of I think gets lost very uh, easily uh, at the initial stages. Uh, once you've got uh, an idea of how the body position should be in, on the uh, surface, we then build in the um, rhythm and the timing of that stroke, um, and, and at that point we can increase feel and the actual. Uh, progression of the pull from that, that point onwards and that's where the slow to fast comes in but that, that doesn't also mean it's just pull orientated slow to fast and the kick is very important as well so anyone that's seen a video of um, somebody like Cavage um, or uh, Michael Phelps kicking downbeat that's good depth but really accelerating through the bottom of the kick so yeah, slow to fast is principle both pull and kick um, and then distance per stroke, um, we'll use with all ages, uh, even when they're swimming at um, young age uh, and just beginning. But when, when we do use that distance per stroke, it's just a case of making sure that uh, it's relevant to the practice. So, uh, for example, when we're doing a practice with the youngsters, um, they'll only do maybe 225 to fly swim. Um, sometimes we've actually done it in the diving pit, um, and, and, but we'll make it a relevant target for the guys that are in front of us dependent on you know the the, the relative uh, quality of their body position and kick so uh if we're talking body position i, I kind of uh, really like to work uh, kick drills um and we use snorkel a hell of a lot uh, initially on body position so we'll, we'll stuff we'll do stuff like um arms by side kick um eddie reese is a massive massive fan of arm by side kick um, I know for a fact that um, uh, schooling all, all the guys that he's had there in, in previous 30 years have all been born and bred off uh, that kind of uh, style of kicking. Um, we don't tend to use it uh, for hard kick. We just use it for technical and essentially get them to keep their shoulder blades and their lumbar, so the scapula and their lumbar sat nice and flat on the surface and teach them to work uh, from the hip, pivot away from the hip and get the toe down. So we're trying to keep a a nice flat body position um, from the upper torso and work the lower torso initially. Um, Okay, so you're looking at whole body movement, but we initially want to start with the back end when we get the rear of the engine working first before we get the front of the engine working. Um, We'll transfer that into a dead man kick where we then can work the expression of the chest. So we leave the armpits open, the forearms on the surface, and then they can start to press the chest, allow some lumbar mobility. So what we get is a chest pivoting down, hips pivoting up, and then the toes pivoting down. So you're starting to get the function of what we'd like in a body position kick uh, within the stroke. Um, We'll do streamline kick on the front and streamline kick on the back. 
just very, very weary that um, if you're doing streamline kick on the front, that couldn't quite be quite limiting. Um, often you've got lads, young lads with tight lats, poor chest postures. So I prefer dead man on that kind of side. Streamline on the back's fine, but it, it kind of limits the access. So in an ideal world, um, we could probably go from um, ABS kick and progress into some dead man kick. Uh, and with the youngsters, that, that will genuinely be around about 50% fins, 50% without. Um, from 12 to 14, we'll go about 25% fins, 75% without. Um, and to be honest, I don't, I, we don't really change that with the older guys because it, it's good for them to uh, just build a, an increased range or play with the speed of the kick, just using the same body positions. What do you think is the big difference in terms of your, let's say I'm coaching at a, an age group club where um, I don't have a swim school, but I get kids that come in at seven, eight, nine, ten, and they're still very early in their fly journey. What's kind of the focus then? And how does, I guess, that differ when they're, say, 15 and they're maybe going on to a regional championships or something? Uh, that, that's exactly what we get, Kev. We, we, we get kids coming in. Um, and I, 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 I wouldn't say, actually, I think uh, in our area, they're not too bad at teaching fly. They're not too scared. Um, the, the teachers in the Learn to Swim program, they're pretty positive on that side. Um, but what you do tend to get is a lot of issues in terms of just knowing how to kick properly. So it's short access from the knee, and it's literally just upbeat out of the water, downbeat, partially way down. So what we try and do is, is if that's the uh, knee joint there, most kids are taught to kick like so. And what we try and do is teach them to flex down, work the toe below the thigh. So it's always toe below shin, shin below thigh. And, and, and focus on that technically when they come in. So first thing we'd probably do is actually teach them how to use a snorkel. Um, second thing we'd do is teach them how to keep their body position on the surface and then uh, build that kick in from that point. Because do you, do you sculling much with them as well in terms of like yeah. maintaining body position? Because obviously when you start to transfer in the arms, it's very easy for that beautiful line to start going out the window. It certainly does. It certainly does. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll tend to do... Uh, so uh, personally, I don't like to use uh, pull boy too much um, for flotation. Um, I don't mind it uh, when you're trying to teach certain uh, points, uh, positions. But what we do, we do plenty of, again, we're in a snorkel. We'll go into a dead man position, holding a nice tall Y um, with a light freestyle kick. And we'll have them do a, uh, what we call a horizontal uh, front skull. So that's been, that means that the forearms are horizontal. The elbows are slightly higher than the wrists. Uh, and that just teaches them to, to control uh, at the front of the stroke. Uh, and we also do mid skull. Um, and the mid skull is directly under the shoulders. Again, high elbows and open chest. Worst thing I really don't want, I hate seeing it is collapsed chests, rounded backs. We need a, a nice positive scapular control when we're looking at fly. Something that you mentioned um, when we were putting these notes together was this concept of it being a layers based stroke and the fact that you, you layer it up from the bottom up. So, Again, for, for the coaches out there that are maybe not as experienced on, on, on butterfly from kind of this grassroots entry level all the way through to performance, what do those layers look like for you? Okay. So, it, it, again, it goes back to our initial stage. It's that body, body line first. So we work body position first. We then build on the kick technically um, because fundamentally uh, the, the whole body position is going to be driven by the kick. Okay. So... Uh, we can float pretty well off the upper torso, but if the leg kick is um, <clears throat> it's not propulsive, it's not adding to the body position, we're, we're going to be struggling with the arms. So essentially, we'll build those two layers in. Uh, the timing and the rhythm, we'll do something really simple like single arm. And, and the reason uh, we'll, we keep it really, really simple is to make sure that we're actually building the timing and get the kick rhythm right. So... Um, uh, I heard about uh, Milak, um, Christoph Milak. Apparently, he does lots and lots of aerobic meters, slow, uh, and he looks like his timing's out. Uh, and the reason being is when he's swimming slow, is that they don't want that that link up. They, what they want to do is make sure his timing's right when he's at race pace, when he's race speed. Um, and and ultimately, 
when we're drilling, I think with age groupers and, and junior swimmers, we've got to be teaching them that timing from the outset. So they know when, they, when they've taken those fins off or they've gone from that drill, they can transfer that into stroke. Something like what Milak does, um, that's not transferable at age group. It's something learned over time. And, uh, so we'll, we'll keep it really, really simple, like single arm. And the most complex we'll do is 3-3-3, three, 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 which is three right arms, three left arms, three full strokes. And just make sure they're kicking their hands into the stroke and kicking their hands out of the stroke. So when the hands enter in, they're getting a, a big kick. When the hands are exiting, they're going a big, fast kick. So we're, we're building on timing in that manner. There's one more thing I'd like to ask because you mentioned about patience when we were putting this together. And actually, especially if you're working in a club where maybe you're with swimmers for three, four, five, six years, especially in those kind of early age group years, they're going to grow and develop. So if you just kind of can expand a bit on what you mean by patience in when you're developing a fly stroke. Yeah, um, we, you can have um, see all the time, uh, young ladies or young gentlemen, uh, age group, that would be really good at fly, naturally pick up a rhythm, are strong enough around the shoulder set, set to control the pull and press through. Um, but maybe I'm not over the course of time develop distance per stroke. You've also got uh, within that, you'll have a group of youngsters that will have uh, a great body position, great kick, but maybe you just haven't built up um, the muscle uh, strength and stability around the key areas to put that into practice. And, and ultimately, I've seen it numerous times, um, and, I, and I use the example of a young lady I've got in the program right now. Um, her 200 flies just dropped down. Um, by about 10 seconds and I've had one uh, young lady when she was 17 drop 11 seconds on a 200 fly in one season and make a national final because of she just she'd just grown in the right places and managed she, where she was connecting with water in the past and just struggling to hold on to the front of her stroke um, now uh, she'd moved on in the course of a year to be strong enough to feel and rotate into position. She wasn't able to get angles off her hand initially. So it's just being patient that some swimmers won't naturally pick up the feel for the front of the stroke or won't naturally have the core power uh, further down the line. And understand that being part and parcel of the process of uh, the strength and conditioning program and just training, training uh, accumulation over time. Awesome. Well, I'm sure coaches have picked up a lot from that and we'll make sure that we include the links to your, your social medias because I know you're quite active on our coaching pages on Twitter and Facebook. Um, but for now, thank you very much for your time today, Ben. Thank you. Thank you, mate. Thank you again to Ben for sharing some thoughts with us. I hope you found those useful. Make sure you hit subscribe so you're kept up to date as our new episodes go live. And be sure to follow us on our social media channels on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook. Just search for Swim England East Region. Thanks for listening and we hope you join us again soon for the Swim England East Region podcast.